Hi guys, what's happening? Well, <laughs> not a lot. I've been busy this week. But uh, I've been creating some stuff. So I remember last time we had these rotor blades and uh, I've been trying to make these uh, flux guides. So as you can see, here is some done. And they are six centimeters. And uh, I figured a nice way to uh, cut them at once without using the, you know, cutter tool or whatever, just sawing it off. This uh, takes a little bit effort, but then again, you don't have to saw it afterwards or something like that. So first of all, I started with these, like uh, just grab a couple of these uh, welding rods all together and then, uh, you know, start cutting it. And as you can see, not all of them have the same length. So you can see some are in, you know, a little bit deeper there. And uh, so I did another of those. Also, I uh, sort of messed up. I forgot to measure twice. So remember when you're doing this, always measure twice. It's uh, it makes sense. You know, because you're sawing and, you know, it takes a long time and then you figure out, shit, <laughs> I should have measured it. So, uh, basically, uh, yeah, well, since not all of them have the same length, I figured out why not, uh, you know, at least apply a little bit of glue. So I did that. Applied a little bit of glue here and uh, there and you know, up until here or so. And I have a plate, wait, I'll grab it. So you basically drill a hole like uh, 10 uh, millimeters or so in a piece like uh, this, you know, the high pressure laminate. And then uh, sort of sand it out with a square, uh, sorry, like uh, file it out with a square file. And then you get this shape, right? It sort of uh, is a little bit bigger than the lines on the rotor blade. So that makes sense because once it comes out, you'll see that it will match and properly fit like this. You see, just like that. So yeah. So you basically put these in just like that and uh, yeah well the other half here you know the longer end is going to be here and uh, sort of make sure it's on the edge and this makes it easier for the handsaw to cut it you know straight and so you can see all of them have the same length. So yeah, I thought it would also be nice to like show you the magnetic, uh, you know, interaction with this thing. So like uh, the magnet conducts obviously this way and also this way equally at the moment. So and it's, it's sort of able to hold this coil up, like lift it off. And uh, when you get one of those uh, flux guides and place it here, you see it drops so like the con uh, the magnetic conductivity sorry the mag yeah whatever you know it conducts better magnetically in this way so it lets go the the you know whatever the coil so i thought it was interesting to see so what also happened is uh these magnets came in and um yeah these are like n42 type of magnets and they're from AliExpress. You can see they didn't give me the same type of batch. So uh, one of uh, the sets is, you know, uh, a little, has a little more height than the other. But that gives me the opportunity to like, uh, you know, try different magnets, different heights and uh, change the air gap between the motor coils and the, you know, flux bridge or whatever you want to call this. And uh, 
So I also have these uh, nylon sort of uh, bolts and nuts. And they're also from AliExpress and they're actually very nice. So here's one of them and as you can see, uh, let's get it in focus, right? It doesn't actually bend at all, so it's quite uh, strong and rigid. I would expect the nylon would be, uh, you know, a little bit floppy, like uh, wiggly, uh, but it isn't. So that's actually a great property and it's also very strong on the, you know, top where the screwdriver has to go. And uh, what's also important is that it isn't magnetic at all, so doesn't stick to the magnet, which is important because we don't want, uh, you know, interference. So I sort of, uh, you know, like last time we talked about this, I sort of messed up here. So I took out this, uh, yeah, well, a uh, piece of copper, which, which holds it like the shaft pin. So it's not, uh, it's not stuck on this side, still stuck on that side. So it, it's not going to move, right? It's rigid. Uh, but I was able to, you know, tighten these coils up. And as you can see, it's uh, very strong. There's no possible movement I can, I'm moving my hands like, you know, like this up and down and it's quite strong, rigid also in uh, this direction, like it's not gonna do anything. So this is great for the first test. So here you can see the welding rods which are left over and uh, yeah there is this like um, sort of like mark I think it's for actually putting it into the welding machine. Yeah we're not going to be able to use that part but I think that this is still long enough to make another one so let's go ahead and put it in the you know placeholder. There we go and then uh, you know tap it to get it straight and aligned until you get something like this so then you apply a piece of tape uh, around it to hold it even more tight and then we're gonna apply some super glue so for this I open the window the stuff smells you know don't inhale it it sucks Just a little bit on each side, maybe a little bit on the top here. Yeah, just like that. Also some on the bottom. Don't wait too long. You know, the, the piece of high pressure laminate might get stuck, so also move it further and then glue more. This is just to give it a general shape. And this won't be the last time it will be glued, but uh, oops. Whoa, that was a lot. <laughs> and then move it along again. And then we move over the tape a little bit so we can go a little bit further. And apply, of course, more glue. I hope you guys can see all of this right without it being too blurry. So yeah, that's basically the idea and then you let it sit for a while because you know the smell and it will be sticky and whatever not. So we'll be back. So we're back and uh, it's sort of dried up now and uh, we start measuring it. It had to be about 6 uh, centimeters, so like uh, 6.2 and uh, right at that point you want to sort of make a, you know, uh, a mark or slit, you know. So, yeah, sort of like this. I don't know, you can see that right here. So we have the mark where to cut, and then obviously, yeah, you have to measure it again. Um, yeah, that looks all right. 
you know, if we sort of start cutting a little bit further than the slit, then it will be fine. Yeah. So at first these welding rods are going to be quite a bit longer, so you can uh, just use the, you know, whatever method to clamp it. I have glue clamps. But then again, there is a, uh, you know, table, uh, what do you call them, feet, whatever, uh, there, so <laughs> I can't get to that point. So what I did is the following. So I took this flywheel and put it on the workbench and then, you know, I was able to clamp it properly and then basically you start cutting right so something like this a little bit further a little bit back that should be all right and then basically just work your magic and when it's done, we get these kind of things, right? So yeah, it takes a, a lot of effort to cut it. But then again, you don't have to go through this process of cutting it with the tool and then they're unequal and either you have to file it like, you know, on a file or saw it off again, like, you know, I did with those. So actually it looks like a lot of effort, but it takes less effort. So yeah, about these uh, rotor plates, um, I didn't have enough material, as you can see, uh, to make another one. So yeah, that's not going to fit. So I ordered another plate of high pressure laminate, only 12 bucks at uh, plexiglass.nl, doesn't cost a lot. So yeah, last time we also talked about, uh, you know, these flux guides, they're going to be... Uh, um, the pressure is going out outwards so like these flux guides will like fly out like bullets right so I'm planning to use this stuff it's like uh, PVC I'm not sure it's what it's for but it's from the you know local hardware store what you normally use for your home and uh, I'm planning to make this uh, fit around like this and uh, you know, with some nuts and bolts, like, uh, in inside the rotor. It will be stuck together. And that's what's going to stop uh, the flux guides from flying out. So, yeah, all in all, there's still a lot to be done. But think about this. Uh, the ID came to me in January, and I started it halfway January or something. So, all in all, a lot has been done already. And, uh, yeah, there's still some more to come. Uh, but soon we'll be able to, you know, at least uh, get the rotors together and, you know, have a test run with these uh, coils, like the twisted and untwisted coils. So, yeah, I can't wait. I hope you feel the same about it. And uh, for now, thanks for watching. And, uh, you know, if you like it, like and subscribe and place a comment. And uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.